this bank holiday weekend that's just gone would have been the biggest for one particular industry, weddings. And although small services are allowed, big receptions and wedding parties, they're still forbidden uh, under COVID laws, as you're probably aware. So how are our local wedding businesses actually coping right now? Alison Davies from Classic Flowers Whitney and Samantha Tempest from the Pretty Cake Company in Minster Lovell uh, join me right now. Thank you both for coming on to have a little chat, ladies. Thanks for having us. Absolute pleasure. So firstly to Alison, now you do flowers for weddings. I mean, how much have you seen business drop? I'm guessing quite a lot. Oh, hugely, drastically. Um, at least 70% um, of our weddings have um, cancelled, postponed next year. So it's, it's had a huge effect on my business. Um, and even though those, those weddings are postponed um, to next year, they're still um, a dark area because we need some clarity from the government to know, you know, what, what is what is the future? What the, what are the current guidelines? How long are they going to be in place for? Is it going to go into next year? And of course, flowers don't last. So how did you manage that uh, during lockdown? Because I'm well, guessing you had a big the, stock. Yeah, the first, um, obviously, um, lockdown started. We had Boris um, telling us everything on the Friday. We had Mother's Day on the Sunday. And two weddings. We had all the flowers for the weddings. They, they'd all arrived. Um, they were all cut. We were ready to arrange them, send out to the wedding. Um, both of our weddings, the couples we were dealing with, they didn't know what to do. They didn't know where to go for it. Or, and in the end, they both um, sadly made a decision that they had to postpone for next year. So we were left with about £1,500 worth of wedding flowers that were no use to anybody. Obviously, and then um, obviously we had to give uh, refunds to the bride, the couple, and um, to see what happens. You know, if, if they do decide to get to carry on for next year, some, some are just actually couples have just said, you know what, we're going to cancel and wait until this is settled down and then we'll, we'll sort of see what happens towards the end of next year. Which has to be difficult for you because in one hand you probably can't blame them for that, but at the oh, same yeah, time, obviously at the same time it's it's affecting uh, affecting your business, which is... Uh, of course it is, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's the... Um, it's, it's the anxiety and stress, really. It's just repeated postponements because we have had couples that have said yes, We'll go ahead, and of course, before August, before the fifth week of August, we um, had a couple of small weddings, and they were unsure what to do. Staff, you don't know to bring them back off furlough. It's 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 just been a nightmare, really. Yeah, no, I, I can absolutely um, absolutely understand that. Now, Samantha uh, probably echoes with you. Actually, uh, you make wedding cakes. How's the yeah. period affected your business? Um, well, I've seen about eighty percent of my weddings being postponed to next year, and ten percent of those cancelled completely. Um, I've only done six weddings this year, which is dramatically down on, on previous years, obviously. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the thing is that the ironic thing is, is the ironic thing is, is that the business from this year has not been lost; it's still guaranteed business for next year. Um, but obviously, we have lost the whole wedding season, where we've had little or no revenue at all this year. And so, like even robust businesses like Ali's, um, we're feeling, you know, we're feeling the effects of, of this dramatically. Um, and, and I suppose now, what, what I think, I think what the wedding industry and the wedding sector feels, you know, more important most, most of all, is the fact that we need more financial help to get us to the other side. Because next year looks to be absolutely crazy, and how, how we're actually going to deal with it, well, well, we'll see when we get there. But well, you know, of course, I think it all goes ahead. We have got so much business that's in the pipeline dealing with the backlog of this year and also the couples that are always originally planned to get married next year as well if they all go ahead. Well, and you also haven't added into the mix here the people that haven't quite yet got in engaged. So Absolutely. it's, it's, it's going to be a manic year for, the, for both of you, I'm guessing. It is. I mean, yeah, the thing about, the, about the wedding sector, it's always felt a very safe place to work. We've got a guaranteed continuum of clients always coming through the doors and it's always so well planned and organised. So... We're always conscious that, that it's, you know, there is this work there. We just need the help from the government to make sure that we're all still there at the end of this so that we can actually deliver what we're being booked to, put, to provide at the moment. So how do you both think the government should have helped you then? Uh, first of all, Alison. I think and they, they looked after the um, obviously hospitality sector. Um, you know, they, and you can't fault what they've done to them, but they've seen to, even uh, apparently our sectors were 14.7 billion to the economy, and we were the first ones really that the um, coronavirus impacted on, and as most of the businesses, and to do with weddings, the wedding sector, and the last to open, we've had nothing at all, 
I mean, it would help. Obviously, um, clarity is a, is the biggest win off them, just to let us, to let us know how long these current guidelines will be in place. And also, you know, that the um, hospitality has helped in the VAT. I mean, everything's been there for them, you know, but we seem to be forgotten. And um, oh. it's these are people sort of behind us, you know, we've got families and everything else. And it's, um, I mean, we just want to make sure we're there for next year to pick up the pieces and help these lovely couples to have their dream wedding. But without the help from the government financially, I can't see that a lot of the, uh, well, we just have to wait and see. If we well, haven't got the finance, we've just lost our, our wedding season, which is March to September. I mean, that's lots of wedding days that I won't get back again. Mm. So, you know, it's um, we just going to have to just wait and see. What about you, Samantha? Anything uh, to add there that maybe uh, you, you feel the government could have helped you with? Um, I mean, I was I was looking at the fact that I was eligible for the self-employed income support, which I have been able to claim, but a lot of people haven't. Um, so, I mean, the thing is, the self-employed income support lasted until the end of August, which has obviously just finished, but the furlough scheme goes on until the end of October. And there's a lot of, you know, feeling within the self-employed um, uh, sector that, that people don't feel that that's quite fair. So certainly extending that to a degree, I think, would help those people that have been eligible to claim it. But there have been an awful lot of people that haven't been able to claim anything. And self-employed people, obviously, you know, like myself, I work from home, I've got a home-based studio, I don't have any staff working for me. So my stress in this situation has probably been considerably less than others. Um, however, you know, it's still a business that I've nurtured from scratch. It's still something that I'm really proud of. And, you know, and I still want to be there at the end of this um, pandemic to be able to provide the service that I've always done. Absolutely. Well, uh, Samantha Tempest and Alison Davies, I really hope things are on the up for both of you very soon. Of course, that's Alison Davies from Classic Flowers Whitney and Samantha Tempest from the Pretty Cake Company in Minster Lovell. Thank you so much for coming on and having a little chat about this this afternoon. And let's keep our fingers crossed. It's all on the up for you very soon. <laughs>